everybody and welcome back to part three of our Revel Corvette build uh, and the hull is still in this condition. Uh, I left it in part two, you might remember if you've seen that video. Uh, I was halfway through the painting process and I'd done all the pre-shading and just started to fill some of the white in uh, on the hull when my old compressor died on me and it turned out that when I dismantled it it appears that the condensers failed on the electrical circuit so that's needed I think to give the motor enough power to start it up and overcome the inertia of the uh, motor uh, and because the condenser had failed I was just getting a buzzing noise so there was power getting through but not enough to start the motor running so I am actually going to get a replacement uh, condenser and try and fit it and see if that makes the difference see if I'm right uh, but in the meantime, I did order and I've received today a new compressor. So I'm good to go with the rest of the hull painting today. So what I'm going to do is go over where I left off, uh, get rid of some of the heavier pre-shading on this. And then hopefully with this very, very pale grey uh, in place as I want it, I'll be able to do the masking up uh, and do the two camouflage colours, which are a kind of a duck egg green colour. A bit similar to REF Sky actually and a pale uh, sky blue colour as well. So we'll get all that done and hopefully we'll be able to get a gloss coat on and put the pennant numbers on as well. So the first colour I'm going to be using over at the bench is Tamiya's Ensign White. It's actually a very very pale grey. Uh, so it goes nicely particularly when the hull's been pre-shaded in black and some of the hull red as well. It just shows through slightly and it just makes sure that that first colour isn't too bright uh, and we don't want that on the on the hull at all. So let's get over and get on with the painting let's see if we can get it finished in this video this time. Okay so let's get uh, some of this uh, Ensign White on and I just want some nice light random coats here I don't want anything uh, too blocky. Uh, but I do want it to cover up this pre-shading so that that's just showing through ever so slightly. So I'm using my usual Harder and Steenbeck uh, Infinity with a 0.4 uh, nozzle on this and a needle. And the compressor, the new compressor is set to about 15 psi so it's a nice fairly low uh, pressure for spraying this hull. So with the uh, colour on to the sort of density that I want it, I just want to blend all that a little bit with some very light passes with the white. So I'm uh, pretty happy with that as it stands. 
uh, with a bit more weathering at the end once I've got the camouflage colours on I think that'll be uh, okay. So I'll do the other side uh, off camera it's just going to be the same process as on the starboard side uh, but the thing is to try and get the density to match on both sides I don't want to underdo it or overdo it just uh, to try and balance the paint job up on both port and starboard. So that's both sides of the hull painted. In the white at any rate. Now we want to start with the camouflage colours. So this is the uh, green that I'm going to be using for the first of the camouflage colours, XF14 Japanese Army Grey, uh, which is very similar to REF Sky actually. It's a very pale grey green colour. So that's uh, okay for the first camouflage. The second one, the pale blue, I'm going to mix that up uh, myself. And I just want to make sure that I make enough of that uh, for later on in the build because there are other elements of the superstructure that have that blue colour on it. So I don't want to run out if I'm mixing a shade. Uh, I want to make enough to be able to go all the way through the build. Uh, but we'll do the green first. Now, so to lay the camouflage out, the first thing I've done is to photocopy the decal sheet uh, to give me the pennant numbers. And I'll just cut the pennant numbers out and lay them on the model where I want them to be. And the reason for doing that is that the camouflage needs to be laid out relative to the pennant number uh, and also to other structures on the ship. So I want to be able to make sure that when I fit the pennant number in the correct place it's going to overlap the camouflage uh, in the correct position. And I've got one or two really good uh, reference photographs to help me do that. So we'll cut these pennant numbers out and we'll lay them on the side of the hull to start with. Okay, so I've just checked against uh, one of my references. It's the photograph that I'm showing uh, now on the top of the screen. And that gives us the position uh, of the uh, starboard pennant number. It's actually a mirror image on the other side. So um, as long as I get one side okay, uh, I can just copy it onto the other. So uh, we're not too bad there. This Portal actually is a little bit too far aft, but I'm not going to do anything about it now. Um, it stood a little bit further forward. So positioning the pennant number just helps me position the first of the camouflage masks. Because I know that it uh, actually goes across the pennant number. Uh, the Revel instructions aren't too bad. They're a little bit out in terms of marking the camouflage out but uh, they're pretty close, but I'll go with the photograph that I've got. I also just want a rough idea of where the waterline is going to run. That's not uh, the final mask for the uh, waterline. It's just so that, again, it's another reference to help me position the camouflage colours. OK, so with the pennant number in place, I can now fit the masks for the rest of the camouflage. So you can see there that having the uh, paper pennant number in position just enables me to aim that mask through into the six. So obviously then when I put the decal on in the same position I'll have the same effect. We'll compare this uh, camouflage scheme with the Revel instructions once we've got it all uh, fitted.
it'll become clear I can promise you once uh, I've got the paper pennant number out of the way Okay, so I want to get rid of the waterline marker because I want to extend the camouflage down below the level of the waterline. Okay, so that's one side done. So this will be in the blue. We've got a green section here, uh, another green section at the back, and another blue section here. So it's quite a striking uh, scheme, I think, when it's going to be done. So I just need to make sure that that's all nicely firmed down. I don't want any creep underneath. And the port side is a mirror image of uh, the starboard so I just need to repeat that masking for this side of the ship. So I'll just make some uh, paper masks just to cover the rest up I don't want to waste loads of masking tape and the other thing I'm slightly concerned about here uh, is putting masking tape over these porthole uh, rig holes because I think it might just pull them off if I'm not careful. Uh, so paper will be a better option I think. So the thing is when applying a secondary camouflage colour over pre-shading is that obviously if I put yet another coat of paint over this uh, I'll lose more of the pre-shading than I've got with the white. So I, I am going to have to reinforce the uh, dark shades underneath the green and blue camouflage colours just to bring it up to the same level as the white underneath. Uh, if I didn't do that, what we'd get is a pre-shaded white hull uh, and a solid colour green and blue uh, sections for the camouflage. I'm just going to put a coat of the base green on first. Then I'll add a bit more black to it. I'm going to go uh, well below the waterline. I don't want the colour fading out uh, as it approaches the waterline, so I'll go well beyond. These Tamiya uh, XF colours uh, spray really nicely with uh, the uh, retarder type lacquer thinners, which is what I'm using here. It dries nice and smooth. If you use water with them, which I wouldn't recommend. They do tend to dry very grainy. Okay, I think that's enough for the first coat. I'll just go back and reinstate some of the shading now. So here I've got a little bit of the base green colour. I didn't wash the cup out and I've just added some rubber black and I've thinned that down probably 
just dirty that up a little bit, particularly along the uh, plate lines. So again, that's uh, too heavy a finish uh, for the final result. So I can go back now and just add a little bit more green, just miss some on and just mess about with the centers of the panels. Uh, and then hopefully we'll have a match for the white that we did earlier. So let's just blend that now a little bit. This is very, very thin. It's the uh, Tamiya color, but it's got probably again 70% thinners in it. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Do the same with the other side, and then we can think about putting the blue on. Okay, uh, time to do the blue now. And I've mixed some lacquer paint up for this, some Tamiya lacquer paint using a base of white and I've just added a few drops of pure blue uh, just step by step until I've got the shade that I'm after. So I've just done that by eye. I'm not too uh, hung up about getting an exact match for this blue. So we'll get some of that on now and we'll go through the same process. We'll put a base coat on, uh, reinforce the shading and then put a mist coat on top. Okay, finally we'll go back with the blue, just blend this a little bit. Okay, so uh, we'll see what this masking's turned out like. So I'll just pad the model on some kitchen towel. I don't want to scratch the finish now that I've got it. So, uh, as I said before, I want to be very careful removing this masking because I don't want to pull the portal etchings off. Get the other side off. That's it. So I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. There's a nice uh, balance of the uh, pre-shading underneath. The blues may be a little bit bright, but I'm not going to uh, redo it. I'm happy enough with that. And I think under subsequent weathering coats, the blue will tone down a little bit. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that. So uh, the next step is to paint the 
uh, underside and mask the water line off. Uh, so I'll do that next, but I don't want to use a pure black for the underside. Uh, a pure black will look out of scale and it'll accentuate that blue, which I'm slightly concerned about. Uh, so I'll be using a rubber black or a NATO black. So that's just an off shade. It's not pure. Uh, and I think it'll just help with the scale effect of the model. So we'll get the waterline mast off and then we can do a bit more painting. Okay, so uh, it's the morning after. And I've marked the waterline off ready for painting the bottom. But you'll also notice that I've redone the green uh, in this lighter, sort of mintier shade. Uh, and that's because uh, last night, as usual, I went indoors and just had to think about what I'd been doing during the day. Uh, looked at a few more uh, references. And what I discovered was actually that the scheme that's uh, meant to be represented in the Revel kit is a Western Approaches uh, scheme, which was white and these two uh, very pale shades. So I thought that the green that I'd applied yesterday was too uh, grey. So I've gone in and remixed this mint green colour. So that's basically just white and a fresh uh, pure green. So I've just gone in and done that again as we did yesterday with a bit of shading on it. I'm happy with that now. It's much more uh, like the Western Approaches camouflage scheme. Okay, so I'll do the black now and I've masked the waterline off again using my references. And one thing that I have done here just as a little tip is to get the finish uh, on the back here rather than a sharp uh, junction of the two lines. I've just cut out with a circle cutter actually it's a hole punch i've cut out a circle from some masking tape and used the outside of that to give me this curved uh, mask here at the back uh, so it's a neat transition at the back here rather than having a very sharp uh, point so i'll mask the rest off i'll use paper as i did yesterday uh, and we'll get the bottom done so uh, ready to go now with some uh, Tamiya Lacquer NATO Black in the airbrush. And again I've thinned this fairly heavily, probably 60-70% thinners. I just want to build the colour up nice and steadily with this. I don't want uh, any thick coats of paint. So it's going to take a while to get some coverage uh, with the paint thin so much. But the Tamiya lacquer paint with uh, the lacquer thinners uh, does a really nice job. This will dry really nice and smooth and the paint surface tightens up over time. So uh, after a few hours, you get a lovely, nice, smooth finish. Okay, so I think that's uh, got a decent coverage. So I'm just going to let that dry for a while. 
Uh, it shouldn't be too long, these lacquer paints with this uh, lacquer thinner, even with the retarder in. Uh, it'll be dry in 10-15 minutes, so I'll just give it that amount of time, then we can just check over, see if we've got any bits of dust that we need to remove. Uh, and then we'll be able to unmask. Okay, so I've uh, got some decent coverage on that. I've just been over the surface with this sanding sponge. This really ancient thing I could do with another one actually. But uh, it's good enough just to remove any final bits of dust or tiny little hairs that sometimes you get in the paint surface. Uh, and obviously I'm going to be giving this a very light coat of clear so uh, I don't want any uh, bits of dust that will get stuck into the clear coat. So uh, that's okay now. I can unmask that now and hopefully we've got a decent result. Hey, I'm uh, happy with that. I haven't got any traces anywhere. I think there's just a little bit there of the black that's just seeped through a tiny little bit. That's brought that off. I'll put a coat of gloss on this now, ready for the decals. I don't need an awful lot. There's just some uh, draft marks uh, up the bow and amidships uh, and of course the pennant numbers uh, on the port and starboard side and on the stern as well. Okay we'll get the gloss coat on now. This is uh, Tamiya's lacquer range and it's the gloss clear coat. So I just want a very light coat of this, not too much. Okay, so that's the clear coat on. That will provide a nice base for the very few decals that there are to go on the model. You can see there we've got a decent gloss. That will be fine for these decals. And obviously I've done the underside uh, varnish as well. And the reason I do that, even though it's not going to have any decals near it, is that it just equalizes the uh, finish on the model so that when we come to put the matte coat on over the top of the decals we get a consistent finish or a consistent sheen right the way along the model. If we left this in matte and just gloss coated where we're doing the decals you can sometimes get a variation in the sheen that you're left with after the matte varnish is applied. So uh, that's the reason why I've done the whole thing. The other uh, advantage of varnishing the hull in its entirety is that it just protects the paint a little bit. So uh, it'll be difficult to avoid scuffing this uh, bottom of the ship, the black. And of course, being black, it will show any marks at all. So the varnish will just help protect that a little bit. Okay, so that's the hull painted.
the gloss varnish has come out really nice and smooth it uh, works really well with the lacquer thinners the tamiya lacquer thinners comes out to a nice uh, smooth sheen it's not a full gloss but it's good enough to take uh, the decals the very few decals that we need to apply but i'll leave the deckling until part four and the reason for that is that i need to be using some setting solutions to get the decals to conform to the plate in detail and sometimes what can happen is applying setting solutions over uncured paint uh, can soften it or even lift it can damage it so i don't want to risk that uh, it's been quite a lot of work to get the hull painted uh, and i don't want to spoil it just by rushing ahead and doing the decals too early also in part four i'll be starting on the superstructure and i'll be using the pontos set to build the bridge the pontos etch brass parts provide most of the new bulkheads uh, for the bridge assembly so I don't think we'll be using an awful lot of the Revel kit. I'll also be painting the decks in preparation for the superstructure. So that'll be coming up in part four, which will be published as usual on Friday. We'll premiere part four on Friday. This has been a little extra video just to get us caught up with where we missed out last week in part two, where we couldn't get all the painting done because of the problems with the airbrush. Just another thing, the Vulcan hasn't been shelved. Uh, it's been a while since I posted, but again, that suffered from uh, not having the airbrush. I was right in the middle of painting uh, the Vulcan. So the problems with the airbrush put a stop to that build as well. But hopefully I'll be doing the rest of the painting uh, and I'll be publishing the next part of the Vulcan build, uh, which will be part eight, I think, uh, over the weekend sometime. So I hope you can join me for those. In the meantime, everybody, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I'll see you in another few days' time. Bye for now.